Hey, what's up everyone? Danahan here, and I'm going to show you how to get PlayStation games running on your Super Nintendo Classic. So, you're going to need a couple of things first. You're going to need a USB flash drive. So, I have this one here, the 128 gigabyte UltraFit by SanDisk, but you can also use any type of thumb drive or anything that will plug into the USB, preferably an eight gigabyte hard drive because these games are at least 300 to 500 megabytes per game and the space will go quickly. So make sure that you at least have an eight gig flash drive. Okay, the second thing you're gonna need is an OTG host adapter and most of the people that I've seen use this particular adapter and it works fine. It has a plug that goes into the back of the SNES via micro USB and then splits off into four ways where one is the micro USB slot that connects directly to the wall and then three other USB ports, one of them being your USB flash drive and then the other two would probably be a mouse and keyboard or two extra controllers, things like that. However, I like to keep things a lot simpler so instead of that I chose to get this CY 90 degree right angled micro USB OTG adapter and this one worked for me because this one is very slim lined I mean all I'm gonna do is just plug in the power supply on the back and then I'm gonna plug in my USB flash drive and that's pretty much it and it's a very low-key setup very slim line, very easy to move around and manage, and plus it's less than five bucks. So let's go ahead and plug in our USB flash drive to our computer. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open up our USB flash drive. And then we're going to create a folder called Hackchi. Okay, and within this folder, we're going to create two folders. One of them is going to be called games. And then the other one is going to be called saves. That's it. So we're done with the setup for this. And now we're going to go into the software side of things. All right. The next thing we're going to do is go to the newest cores set by KMFD Manic and I will put the link in the description down below as well. So we're at his GitHub and this is going to contain all the files that we will need to complete this installation. So go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and right click on the 11-27-17 zip file. Go ahead, right click save as, save that file in there. And then once you do, we'll go ahead and open up the file itself. Okay, so we've downloaded the file and we're going to start off by unzipping the modified Hatchy 2 version 2.21 by Dan the Man 827. And so you can find that under the dependencies and extras folder and the advanced users folder. So here is the file that you're going to need. So hackchi 2.21f and then you're going to extract this and then place it into your hackchi folder. And what you're going to do is get your old version of hackchi and you're going to copy the config, dump and games SNES files and then paste them or drag them to the new Hackchi that we just unzipped today. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and open up the new version of Hackchi. All right, so once we got that open, let's go ahead and plug in our SNES Classic to our computer. Okay, so now that we have our SNES Classic plugged in, we're going to go ahead and uninstall and flash the original kernel. So let's go ahead and uninstall. So click on kernel and then uninstall here on the bottom. Make sure that you hold the reset button 
on your SNES Classic as well as power it on. Keep the reset button held down until you hear the USB connect and let go of that button and go ahead and click on uninstall. Do you really want to remove all traces of HackCheat 2 and return your SNES to its original state? Yes, so click yes. And then be patient because it's going to take some time. Somebody say hey! Okay, so now that everything has been uninstalled, you're going to go ahead and flash the original kernel. So again, we'll tap on the kernel tab and then flash original kernel. Do you want to flash the original kernel? Yes. So we'll go ahead and put that back to FEL mode by powering it off, then holding the reset button on the Super NES, then clicking on the power switch, holding down the reset button until you hear the USB connect, and then let go. So let that do its thing. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna go to the HMOD files that we had downloaded earlier from KMFD Manix GitHub. So we're gonna go into the KMFD Manix SNES cores and we're gonna go and grab the cores that we want to install, but make sure that you have the PCSX rearmed Neon 91517. So make sure that you include that into your installation as well as the font fix HMOD. This will make sure that the fonts and the, the words look correctly on the USB host mod that we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and install the modules. And I have a few already listed here, so I'm gonna go ahead and install my modules and then we will um, put this into FEL mode. Okay, I've selected my modules. We'll go ahead and click on OK. And we're going to go back to FEL mode. So we're going to hold reset and then power. And then let go of recent once we find that the USB is connected. All right. So now we're going to go into our advanced users folder. And what we're going to do is unzip the hackchi dash GUI dash win32 official zip and we're going to go ahead and extract these files. So once we do that, we'll rename that to something along the lines of USB host. So we'll just change the name here. So once we rename that, we'll go into our C drive. So already done that. It's underscore USB underscore host. And then from here, you're going to open that up. And then you're going to go to your Hackchi folder and go into your dump folder. You're going to see the kernel. So you're going to copy this kernel and then paste that over to your dump folder. So drag it and drop it there. I've already done so, but once that's done, we can start with using the original Hackchi. We'll go ahead and open up Hackchi dash GUI from our USB underscore host folder that we had created. So this is what the original Hackchi looked like. You can see why Hackchi 2 was made. It was much more user friendly to use than this thing, but it's okay because we got some instructions on how to flash and unpack and dump the kernel and things like that for our Super Nintendo. So let's go ahead and start off by clicking on dump kernel dot IMG. And if you see this message here, it means you're not on FEL mode again. So go ahead and turn off the Super Nintendo Classic. Go ahead and hold the reset and then the power button and then hold it until you hear the USB connect. Okay, once you do that, click again on dump kernel dot IMG. You're going to see some operation timed out errors. Don't worry, that is normal. Okay, so go ahead and click on unpack kernel.img and let that do its thing. Okay, 
So now that's done, we're going to go ahead and click on Flash Kernel. The prompt's going to come up. Sure, yes. Just check out the way I live, everybody. Hey, yo, everybody. The time to and okay, now that's done. We're going to go ahead and rebuild kernel. So go ahead and click on rebuildkernel.img. Uh -oh, uh -oh, Perfect. So now that's done. The last thing we're going to do is click on memboot. So go ahead and click memboot. Okay, we're all done. If you already did the mod on your SNES Classic, but you forgot the PlayStation module as well as other modules, don't worry about that. We'll go ahead and open up HackG2 again, and you can install the extra modules here, press OK, and then once you press OK, we'll go back to the original HackG and click on Memboot. So let's go back to HackG2 and open that up. So now we're going to go and add our games. There are two different types of games out there. The first type are bin slash queues or ISO files. The second type is what they call an eBoot file. So we'll go ahead and start off with installing QBin files into HackG2. I'm going to start off by installing ESPN Extreme Games. And this is a Q slash bin setup and how I'm able to do that easily is by normalizing the Q file. Make sure that there are no spaces and no parentheses of any kind. What we're left off is ESPN underscore extreme underscore games dot Q. So once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and drag that Q file into HackG2. And what's going to happen is it's going to create this file. There is a compress option. So what you're going to do is uncompress. So now what we're going to do here is where it says Q, we're going to change that to PCSX. And that's it. That will connect to the HMOD that we had installed, and that will read that file. So obviously, we just added the Q file. We're going to have to also add these bin files. So let's go into the HackG folder, go into games underscore SNES. And I believe that the ID is DMZCE. Looks like that one here. And here's the folder. So what we're going to do is literally copy and paste. We've got the bin and Q files into the folder. The Q file is connected and that should be it. All right. So the second type of file is called an eBoot or eBoot.pbp file. You're going to go ahead and highlight the eBoot file and literally drag it onto HackG2. All right, so this is where your patience comes in handy because this is going to take some time. Cool, so now that we have finally gotten the eBoot file onto HackG2, we're going to go ahead and change that to Cool Borders 3, one of my favorite wintertime PlayStation games. What we're going to need to do is change this command line from PBP to PCSX. Okay. What you're going to do is uncompress this. So now that's done. We'll go ahead and get the box art. So we'll click on Google. All right. So there it is. Cool Borders 3 game. So once we've gotten that down, We'll go ahead and add the rest of our games. Okay, so three hours later, got all the games that I wanted to load onto my USB flash drive. So we're now going to go ahead and synchronize these games to our USB flash drive. But first off, we're going to go ahead and make sure that our folders are set so we're going to go into the settings tab and then go into pages and folders and then make sure that custom show folder manager every time is checked so we got that and now since we downloaded this specific version that dandeman827 had created what you're going to do is hold down the shift button hover over the synchronize button and then go ahead and click on that. And so what happens now is you get this browse for folder pop up 
and now you could browse to your USB flash drive. So remember the section that we created for the games folder within Hackchi? We're going to click on that and press OK. So it knows that we have a bunch of new games and we're going to go ahead and set those in. So I already have a couple of folders set, so I'm going to go ahead and put these games in the PlayStation folder which I had created. And mind you, the games are going to be inside of the unsorted folder, the ones that you have just added. And if you don't know how to create a folder, hit the home menu and then click new folder, which will create a new folder and you can name it PlayStation like I have here below and then you can assign the menu icon, click on that, download the icon into your folder. I believe that is here under folder images. So you can save that there and I'll go ahead and start adding the games. And don't forget, you gotta believe. So now that the games have been set, there's no need for the unsorted folder. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Right click, delete, yes. Okay, so make sure that all of the games are in the correct folders before you press OK because this will take a while as soon as you press OK. So, here goes. You gotta do what? I gotta believe! All right, so after one whole day and many different types of formatting on my USB flash drive, I've finally got it to complete. So let's go ahead and try this now on the Super NES Classic. Just letting you know, EX Fat didn't work for me, so results may vary, but I went back to using Fat32 and that was working fine. So let's go ahead and check this out. All right, so here's the flash drive that I'm using, 128 gigabyte ultra slim flash drive. And here is the USB OTG that I'm using. Let's see if I can get it into focus. So yeah, here's the micro USB plug that plugs into the power supply. And here is the USB that you plug in your flash drive with. So let's go ahead and try to do this with one hand. All right. Perfect. So we got that snug and set, slim lined. All right, let's go. Hope this works. All right. Ooh, okay, so it's loading. It looks nice. Oh, all right. So there we go. I have my custom folders created. I have just two. One is arcade and the other one is PlayStation. All the regular games are set up and I do have RetroArch there. Uh, so setting up the folders through the modded hack cheat by Denimin A27 it worked perfectly so just uh, be patient. It takes a long time especially with the amount of games that I got. So let me check the other folders first. So Let's see. All right, so good. I got my Capcom folders, Konami folders, Midway, Neo Geo, other fighting games, SNK. Sweet. Let me see. I just want to make sure that I got my game set here before we go back to the PlayStation. All right. Sweet. So pr practically all of the Capcom games I really wanted to play. As you could see that this is way more than 300 megabytes now so that works out for me all right so let's go back cool so all right now on to the playstation let's do this i hope this works awesome all right cool so here are all the playstation games that i have installed onto my Super Nintendo Classic. So we got a lot of classics here, really. So let's go ahead and start off with one of my favorites, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, the OG one. 
Let's do this. Yes, all right. So we got this to play. We got the Activision loading screen or welcome screen, I guess. Never soft. I always like the uh, music in this series. I think uh, Ska was at its best. All right. Ooh, all right, cool. So it looks like it's running. Let's go free skate. You gotta pick the musk. Gotta, gotta, gotta pick the musk. All right, warehouse, let's do this. It's gonna be hard to try and do this. It's, that's cute, it's loading. It's gonna be hard to do this with one hand. Ooh, all right, sweet. It's running really well. Frame rate, not bad. Tell you all about it. Huh? All right, sweet. Okay, so we know that works. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Select and start. Let's quit retroarch. All right, sweet. So we know that that works. And that's one of the bin Q games. Let's go ahead and try. One of the games that I used an eboot for would be Tekken 3. Let's go ahead. Sweet. All right. Let's go ahead and press start. Sick. All right, so we got all the modes here. Let's go ahead and check out arcade mode. Oh, all right, so we got to unlock some characters, but hey, it looks like it's working. All right, let's try a little bit of this. I think I could do 10, 10 hit oh, with one hand here. Round one, fight. Nope. Yep, that works. All right, okay. Needed to get out of that one, so. All right, let's go ahead and try uh, one more game, or let's see if we can do a couple more games. Oh yeah, Parappa the Rapper. Oh, let's go ahead and try that one. Cool, that's one of my favorite music games of all time. I liked how they re-released that last year at PlayStation Experience, which I'll be heading out to next week. So if uh, you guys are out there, come and hit me up. I'll be there this weekend. Sick. All right. All right, let's get out of here. Let's try this. Sick. Okay. So it looks like it's working fine. Let's see how the ah. video is working fine. Ooh. Nice. She's all in the mic. Woo! So nostalgia. So very nostalgia. All right, cool, it works. We figure that out. All right, so we've tried three games, a couple games here. Got a bunch here, but uh, let's see. The last game that I really wanted to show you guys, if it is here. Yep, Final Fantasy. Okay, so this is the infamous three disc setup, so Oops, let's go back there. So, before you go and ask me how to load these, you know, three disc, how to play these three disc games, 
I would say start off with just getting the e-boot of these games because it's easy. It's all those three CDs in one, which I have here. And I'll go ahead and show you how to change CDs. So this is Final Fantasy VII, one of my favorite RPGs of all time. I think everyone's favorite RPG. So we're on disc one currently. And so in order for you to switch to disc two and disc three, you're gonna go to quick menu and then go to disc control right here. Okay, then from here, you could see that your disc index is one. Okay, so say for instance, you wanna do disc two, you could open up the disc, which is disc cycle tray status click on that and now you see that it says ejected virtual disk now we're going to change it up so setting disk in tray two three because this is two of three disks so we can either do two or three doesn't matter we're just doing this to test and then go back to disk cycle tray status and that's going to close the disk so close virtual disk tray and boom you're done so that's for eboot disks if you have your setup where, you know, each individual ISO bin Q, you know, folder is set up, what you're going to have to do is just go to disk image append. And then from here, find the directory where it's at, then run the Q file there for that. So, um, like I said, again, the eBoot is the easiest way to play multi-disc games. So let's go ahead and go back. And then we're going to go hit resume. So what's going to happen is we can hit on new game. And yep, please insert disk one. All right, so that's it for the video. I appreciate you guys watching it. I'm going to go ahead and leave some details in the description below. And if you haven't watched my previous videos on my SNES Classic tutorials, go ahead and check those out. If you have any other questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section as I will try to answer them the best I possibly can. If you'd like to see more content from me in the future, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let's go to restart and let's see what this is all about. So check this out.